Okay, so I have uh, touched on a little bit about the concepts of forgiveness and repentance in previous videos, but I haven't really talked much about what they are and what they mean, okay? Now, it's too, it's, it's a huge topic. Forgiveness and repentance is an absolutely huge topic, okay? And I'm not gonna pretend like I can explain all of it in one video, of course. So, we're just gonna cover the, the principles first, okay? Before we start talking about examples, because chances are, as we start going through this material, it may challenge your own personal views of what you feel the process actually is, okay? Now, forgiveness and repentance kind of go hand in hand, right? People talk a lot about them together, okay? Well, what even, what do, what do these terms even mean, okay? Let's talk about it. forgiveness. My understanding of forgiveness is it is a releasing of suppressed emotions relating to traumatic events or event or events that occurred to you. Okay? And that's that's the key phrase here. It happened to you. Someone else did something to you. Someone else put an error into your soul. Okay? Repentance is releasing of suppressed emotions relating to traumatic event or events that you inflicted on another. Okay? So it is your actions that you have, you have, you have taken your free will out in the world and you have chosen to commit non-loving acts on other people. Okay? Now, why does this stuff matter? It is actually <laughs> our collective refusal to forgive is part, is a major factor of what ages and ultimately ends our physical body. Yeah. It's too much to get into now. We'll talk more about these more advanced concepts in the future, okay? But understand that your aging and your dying, your physical death, are law of attraction events related to your suppressed emotions inside of you, okay? Well, you might be saying, I don't have suppressed emotions inside of me. I'm cool, you know? If you have not forgiven for every single event that has happened to you, your, you, you, your body will continue to degrade, okay? Why? Because with this stuff, there's essentially two ways to go through it, okay? We can go through it on our own, and we engage the law of compensation, which is a way to explain how that our soul operates to bring us things, to get us to feel out our own emotions. And that when we are ready to confront the traumatic events that we have put out in the world, we feel them back. We receive that back. Okay? That's natural love. I, I have not made a video differentiating God's love versus natural love, but if we choose not to involve the Creator, we follow through this law of compensation, right? Some people call it karma. You get what you pay for, you reap what you sow, you get what you put out there, kind of thing, okay? That's what this is. The other way is through engaging the Creator, okay? So there are laws of attraction and laws of forgiveness. And these laws are part of what the Creator has designed and constructed to hold this place together. And there's a hierarchy to these laws, okay? So the law of forgiveness and the law of repentance is a higher spiritual law than the law of compensation, which is down here. This is base law of compensation. This is like, you know, automatic. No one's paying attention. This is just what's going to happen, okay? Whether you like it or not. We often, we choose to ignore it 
and then complain about being subjected to it rather than understanding it and taking responsibility for ourselves. Most people choose to engage the law of compensation. And this can take hundreds, maybe even thousands of years, depending on how dark your particular condition is. Okay? However, if we engage the creator, we can utilize his laws to more quickly and more completely understand what has happened to us, understand what we have done to other people from God's perspective, and release the errors associated with those actions. Okay? So, like, a lot of people want to engage in this without understanding that this is necessary too. If you receive an error in your soul, let's say, that, let's say your parents teach you to engage your anger and violence to solve your problems, because that's how they solve their problems, right? So like, let's say you were assaulted when you were a child. Your parents are teaching you that they use violence to solve their problems. And then you change your belief in your soul because we don't want to feel out our own sadness that our parents are striking us, assaulting us, that, oh, this must be loving behavior. Okay? So then you go out into the world and you start using your false belief to get what you want. You start manipulating people with your anger. You start enacting violence on animals or other people or the environment. Let's say you kill someone. What do you do? Do you repent? Well, repenting is part of it. But if you just say, oh, I'm going to repent, you're not actually repenting as God would have you repent, as God understands repentance to be. Because part of repentance is understanding where the error came from in the first place and forgiving those people. Okay? Because, again, if we understand how our soul works, we inherit errors in our soul from our parents before, while we're in the womb and in our early life. We develop our free will because we have not been taught about how the soul works, we go on life with all our errors, okay? And then we, our law of attraction, the law of attraction, starts bringing us events in order to get us to release our errors. And we don't want to do that. So we just keep enacting on the world, okay? Now, murder is obviously a non-loving action. And... When someone engages in murder, they're going to have to feel the consequences of that, whether it be through the law of compensation or through the repentance and forgiveness process. But if you just repent without going through the forgiveness process to understand where the original error came from that puts you in a position to murder someone, the process is not complete. And it is likely that you will hold that error and continue to enact actions based upon that error. Okay? So like, if a person does something to you and they say, oh, I'm sorry, they're not really sorry. Because if you go through the repentance forgiveness process, you never do that thing ever again. It is impossible. Using this example of murder, if you, went, if you murdered someone and then went through repentance and forgiveness completely, you would die before you murdered somebody else. That's how it works. Okay? These are the basic 
concepts, okay? Um, I guess we'll call this video part one. I'm gonna make another video shortly with some visual aids that demonstrate like how this actually p plays out in the physical world. And again, how we can play around with it because oftentimes, you know, I haven't really got into it, but guess what? We wanna forgive the people that we should be repenting towards and we often wanna repent towards the people that we should be forgiving. Of course, you know, we humans, we have it backwards, okay? Okay, so, I'll talk more about this in the future, but for now, you sit with this. Forgiveness, again, releasing of suppressed emotion relating to traumatic events that occurred to you. To you. Repentance is releasing the suppressed emotions relating to the traumatic events that you inflicted on another or others, okay? And there's two ways to engage this process. We can use the natural law technique, which is just sit back and do nothing and let nature take its course. That's the law of compensation. Or we can engage the creator on his laws, his hierarchy of laws, okay? Love and peace, friends.